Okay, um, our series that we're doing at the moment, God With Us, uh, leading up to Pentecost, which is next week, uh, when we uh, celebrate or look at the Holy Spirit coming, being given. Um, and so we're looking at this first part of Acts as we lead up to that, if you've caught up with that. Last week we looked at the power of the Holy Spirit um, and what Jesus says here in Acts 1.8. Uh, this week we want to look at the witness of the Holy Spirit. Um, the, the story goes that when the famous uh, pastor and evangelist author D.L. Moody uh, was criticised for his evangelistic methods, he replied by saying this, I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it. <laughs> you know, sometimes I feel a, a little like that when I start looking ahead at, at uh, preaching about witnessing or sharing faith, you know, like today. Because I'm not brilliant at it myself, I must admit. You know, I have those conversations which I just feel really awkward and something comes up and you think, yeah, I should say something now because it's a natural lead-in and I'll say something really naff and kind of connected with God and church and then it'll kind of peter out and I'll say goodbye and shake their hand and walk off. And then I think almost immediately, oh, I should have said that. Does anybody else have that? Yeah? That's good. Okay. Um, and so that's why I was kind of... Uh, pleasantly surprised, I guess, when um, I found in a real depth to what Jesus is saying in this passage in, in chapter 1, verse 8 of Acts, uh, that we're looking at, when he talks about being witnesses, when he talks about being a witness, verse, verse 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So what I want us to do this morning is kind of plumb down a little deeper to understand what this idea of witnessing uh, is all about. Uh, witnessing is not really a word we really use that much today. Witness. You know, Jehovah Witness, maybe, they've kind of stolen it, haven't they? And we've largely forgotten about it, I think. Um, perhaps we feel it's too hard and uncomfortable. Perhaps we feel it's only, you know, for those early apostles and disciples in the early church. Well, it certainly was hard and uncomfortable for them. Um, does anybody know what the Greek word for witness is, that when you read it in the Bible, the Greek word that it comes from? Yes, ma or um, martis from the, yep. So what do we get out of that? Martyr. Man. Uh, it's these people, there's stories of these people um, bearing witness to Christ, even though they're in the lion's den or being tortured, uh, never denying their faith and dying for it never renouncing their saviour. They were witnesses, they were martyrs, that's where the word came from. What a kind of legacy to live up to if we take this witness thing seriously when Jesus talks about it. But what were these martyrs actually doing? Well, they were really telling and showing Jesus, weren't they? Telling and showing Jesus. And I want this to kind of be our working definition of witness this morning, telling and showing Jesus. Jesus. Jesus says here in verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. We could kind of paraphrase that now, couldn't we? Now we've got a definition. You will tell and show Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this was what the early disciples did. They had seen Jesus. They'd lived with him, learned from him, suffered through losing him and had seen him... Uh, uh, alive again, risen from the dead. Uh, it appeared that this was an amazing truth right before their eyes. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Saviour. And it's this Jesus that then says to them, uh, so you've seen this. You've seen me. You've seen what's happened. You've seen what I've done. Now I want the whole world to know. The whole world from Jerusalem to Samaria out to the ends of the earth. This was God's big plan unfolding. And, and those that choose Jesus and follow him become part of this big plan of salvation. But I can imagine the disciples, in fact, it's probably what I'd do, kind of kicking stones and head down, kind of mumbling, oh, I'm not too sure if I'm up for this. It's all right for you, Jesus, you're the son of God. You know, crowds follow you, people listen to you. You know, you walk on water, calm storms. You know, me, I'm just a humble blacksmith or a fisherman or, you know, I'm just a, you know, chef working or building and I'm just a full-time mum at home or a stay-at-home dad. I haven't 
got a job at the moment, I'm on the benefit, and you know, I'm, I'm not someone that should include, be included in this plan of God. I'm sure you can get your message across, Jesus, without me. I sort of say this, but I expect it's probably what the first, something of what the first disciples were thinking. Inadequate, don't know enough, not too sure what to do or say. And that's kind of the reality of our human condition, isn't it? We are inadequate to speak the truths of God. We are ill-equipped on our own to tell and show Jesus. When we come to faith in Jesus, who are we to now carry God's plan forward, God's plan of salvation forward? But that's kind of the point. God doesn't just say, you know, well, son, you're part of the family now. Time to man up and do your job. Get out there and tell people about me. No, what does he say? What does Jesus say here? But you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses. You see, this is the answer Jesus gives really to their fears, their feelings of inadequacies, their, their lack of understanding, their struggles to feel equipped to tell and show Jesus to others. This is Jesus' answer. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. In other words, I will give you the means to tell and show me to the world. And notice Jesus doesn't give this as a command. You receive the Holy Spirit and I want you to go out and be witnesses. He actually says that you will be my witnesses. It's a fate accomplished. The Holy Spirit is given. You will be my witnesses. It's going to happen as a result of the Holy Spirit working. So here's the point. Point one this morning. We're not alone. God is with us to make sure we are equipped pushed and prodded and whatever, given the words, shaped, also we can tell and show Jesus. That's God's will being worked out through willing, faith-filled people. The power of the Holy Spirit to witness, to tell and show Jesus. So what's point two? Uh, it's just something, <coughs> point two is kind of more like point one and a half, because it's something that I want us to get as we make some connections here. Uh, about the work of the Holy Spirit to witness. So point one and a half, I don't know what you'll write down when I say that, but 1.5, it's fine. Uh, this was a real revelation to me when I started, when I noticed, I sort of saw this in, in God's word. Uh, when Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will come and you will be my witnesses, it, it's not like this is a new task for the Holy Spirit, it's suddenly given this new task. It's not like the Holy Spirit suddenly has to sort of concentrate and make sure he focuses on helping people share Jesus. No, it's, it's what the Holy Spirit does by, by his nature. God the Holy Spirit does this because remember, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Jesus. Romans 8, 9 says this. And as the Holy Spirit of Jesus, he is also therefore Jesus-shaped, we could say. Everything the Holy Spirit does reflects Jesus in some way. Everything he does makes something about Jesus more visible. There was a great um, uh, YouTube video that did the rounds a, lot, a number of years ago where uh, they s sang a song. Um, man, I went blank this morning as well. What's the song? Um, come on, man. <laughs> anyway, the song doesn't actually matter. As they're singing it, uh, Jesus paid it all. I got it. As they were singing the song, there's a big canvas in the back, a number of canvases, and a number of people are painting on it like this. And as, it, as, it, as the song goes on, you start seeing these lines appear, black and shapes, and you're sort of wondering what's going on here. And over the course of the song, uh, as it's sung, an amazing image emerges, and you suddenly realise what they're painting. And this is it. And it only just becomes apparent at the end. In a way, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He, he shapes in us and in the church Jesus so that Jesus is told and shown. We can kind of see this in, say, the main ways we think about the Holy Spirit working in our lives. We talk about the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us, don't we? And, and we think about the Holy Spirit opening our eyes to the truth. Some of the stuff uh, Nigel was grappling with this morning. 
And through faith we talk about experiencing spiritual life and life eternal. So the Holy Spirit guides, he brings us to truth, he gives us life. Now if you think about it, isn't that simply the practical side or the outworking of what Jesus says when he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. The Holy Spirit constantly shines a spotlight on Jesus. The Holy Spirit constantly shows, tells and shows Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is the witness. So once we get that sorted, once we get point one and a half sorted, we can then move on to my second point, final point this morning, because now we can understand how the power of the Holy Spirit results naturally in God's people being witnesses, in God's people naturally telling and showing Jesus, because anything the Holy Spirit does will naturally tell and show Jesus. I bet some of you have turned off this morning uh, thinking, you know, just another sermon about witnessing, sharing faith, you know, do this, do more, get out there and, you know, you've got the power of the Holy Spirit so surely you can just start and what's your excuse, you know. It's kind of fair enough, I suppose, because what did Peter do after all when the Holy Spirit was given in in chapter 2 of Acts and uh, immediately afterwards, what did he do? He did it from verse 14 of chapter 3 all the way to verse 39. He preached to 3,000 strong crowd, no less. So we could say, get out there, you know, get out there and get on with it, get on a pedestal, where's the crowds? It's not quite as sort of simple as that though, is it? That's why I think it's good to start with this idea of the Holy Spirit being the witness, being the one that works and moves and is active to make sure Jesus is seen and heard. When someone comes to faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit starts the process of transforming us to be more like Jesus. Simply because they are a follower of Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus is at work in their lives. So sure, we'll be unlikely to be called called to kind of stand in front of 3,000 people like Peter. But if you are a follower of Jesus, you will still be watched. We will still be seen. When you go to work, and uh, what do people see? When you meet your, your friends or someone for coffee who don't know Jesus, what do they hear? When you gather with relatives or meet new people, involve ourselves in community events, when we post on Facebook or put photos on Instagram, what do people hear and see? Because if the Holy Spirit is doing anything in our lives, then they should hear and see Jesus in some way. And our words that we answer and speak and the things that we do should more and more reflect Jesus. They should, people should hear and see the reality of who Jesus is, what he has done, and how he changes lives because he forgives us of our sins, pours out his spirit to bear witness to the whole world. That's what they should hear and see. And remember the Holy Spirit's at work to do that. One more thing I want to say this morning. And I want to talk about it kind of in an effort to again expand our thinking of this idea of witnessing, of telling and showing Jesus. So, and to help us kind of realise that it's not just this thing that slightly crazy people do on street corners or down on the beach with strangers. Um, And it's not just something that individuals do. And this is the point I want us to think about. It's also about the witness of the church as a whole. The church is there also to tell and show Jesus. The witness of the church is not something we perhaps always think about, though, is it, in our individualistic kind of culture, where it's more about us and our own happiness and our ability to affect change. But God's plans are much bigger than just you or I walking solo. We read in Scripture how God unites His church. He unites His church by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.3 says, Keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. He brings together all sorts of people, old and young, odd and normal, <laughs> those normal people, and, and joins us together, doesn't He? Like a, like a family, united, one body. This is what God does, and He brings others into that that. Um, united people, each with different roles and responsibilities, sure, but all an important part 
uh, making up the one body as we read about in Scripture. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says that you are the body of Christ and each member's of it. And so if the body of Christ, uh, surely when, so if we are the body of Christ, even here, then surely when people see the church, whatever church that is, a church worldwide or, or a local church like us, they should see, in a sense, the body of Christ. They should see Jesus. They should see the head of that body, which is Christ. Have a look at the first few chapters of Acts. and In fact, right through Acts, we see something of this reflected as this early church starts gathering. As the Holy Spirit starts bringing people together and they begin to tell and show Jesus. Acts 2, <clears throat> verse 42, fine. It says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to God's word, in other words, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. <clears throat> the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. People were seeing something. And we're attracted to it. They were seeing the work of the Holy Spirit shaping Jesus in the lives of this fellowship of believers. There's something amazing about that, that God works with a group of people to make them more like Jesus as a whole. And what was this early group of people doing, this fellowship? Were they shouting from the rooftops, pounding the pavement of Jerusalem? in the towns of Judea, talking about Jesus? It doesn't say they're here. Rather, they were devoted to God's word. They prayed together. They shared meals together. They helped each other so no one was in need. And as a result, they stood out. They stood out because they began to be more and more reflecting Jesus to people around them. And the Lord added to their number daily. That's the witness of the church. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And I love the fact that this is not you know, high theological argument here or complicated biblical exegesis or, or, or you have to go through some serious long evangelism kind of meeting and talk. No, the building blocks that under, undergirds a church, church's ability to witness is Bible, prayer and food. It's that simple. Bible, prayer and food. How simple a formula is that? It's what the Holy Spirit uses to make us more like Jesus, and attract others to him. But it's a simple formula that I think we don't always get right. One thing that we, as a church at the moment, are lacking is uh, cell groups that meet outside Sundays. We've kind of gone through a time of decline in our cell groups for various reasons. Um, what to do, these cell groups? To open the Bible, to pray, and to Share food. You see, I'm not convinced that we are able to do this simple formula all that well if we only meet here on Sundays. Meeting outside of Sundays means we start allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us much more. And, the, and for order for the Holy Spirit to shape each of us and each of us as a member of a united church here at St. Stephen's, we surely need, I'm sure, more intense prodding and shaping at times and support and encouragement. Surely we need to be meeting outside in some way and devoting ourselves to knowing and living out the Bible, praying together. Surely we need to be sharing meals together, to mull over mulled wine and chew the fat and drink tea and compare each other's coffee. We all do that, I know. Because it's actually these things that the Holy Spirit uses to shape us to be a church that looks like Jesus. And what does a church that looks like Jesus do? It attracts people to him. It tells and shows 
Jesus just by virtue of what they do and who they are. I want us to think about what this might mean for each of us. We might meet outside in, uh, one-on-one or with small groups already. It's great There's, there are things happening. But we're going to give the opportunity over the next uh, few weeks to sign up for, uh, for cell groups to meet outside of uh, through the week. And we're kind of just putting a call out there. Who wants to be part of something? Okay. Uh, normally I was, I was going to do this big organisation thing over the next two months and get something really sorted and in place so it all looked organised. And I was sitting here last night at about midnight when I realised that actually I'm just going to do it today. <laughs> uh, so there is a sign-up form in, out there. You can put your name there and say, yeah, I want to join a cell group. I want to, I want to meet to open the Bible and pray and to eat. Remember? Food, uh, food, food first. <laughs> Might be food first. <laughs> Bible, prayer and food. I want to join or I... Or you can also tick if you like if you want to host. We love people hosting. You can you can provide the food, uh, or if you're interested in leading. Uh, and so over the next weeks or so, there'll be more details, and we'll be gathering together to look at how we get everybody connected. Okay. We want the Holy Spirit to shape us as a church. I'm sure. This is an opportunity to allow that even more. We want to allow God to work through us, to make him known. So, where have we got to this morning? The witness of the Holy Spirit. It's about God with us to make it happen, to show and tell Jesus. And it happens because the Holy Spirit is the witness. The Holy Spirit is all about shining a spotlight on Jesus. Whatever he does is Jesus-shaped, we said. And this shaping is in individuals' lives of faith, but also, importantly, in the life of the church. In the life of this church, that's the witness of the Holy Spirit. I want us to just spend a bit of time, like last week, uh, allowing God to speak to us and uh, praying. And if you'd like um, uh, prayer, then just put your hand up and someone or people around you can pray for you. And there'll be others from uh, the leadership team available as well. Just think about what is God wanting us to do. Does it mean... Is God calling us to commit stronger to the fellowship of believers, as Acts 2 says? To say, yes, I want to be part of what God's doing. I want to be shaped to be more like Jesus. It might be that you've been off off track for a while, and actually you don't feel very shaped like Jesus, and you want to get back on track. So think about how God's shaping us as individuals, shaping us as a church to tell and show Jesus. And let's respond to that and ask God to help us do it. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to spend a moment of silence thinking about this. Uh, And as we are silent, we want to offer up our lives to you and the life of this church, united in you and by you.